<laughs> There's a rarity in my collection of uh, electrostatic toys, very few of them. This is one of the earliest ones that came out, Israeli invention, uh, about 1977. It's this thing here, which I'll bring up the camera in a minute. Um, but it's it's a very nice ex uh, demonstration of one of the fundamental forces of nature. These are excellent things to look at in science museums, which I'll mention later, but um, as toys, they don't work that well. But there's, there is an exception, because the last one I'll be showing you, of course, is this, this first one's not bad, actually. It's little, I'm going to get them to focus. It's little piss balls, and if we shake it gently, you see how they're hovering in the air. There's about five cells there, each separated by a little plastic um, screen, which is which it troubles them to, to film, but it's okay. And then there's uh, there's quite a quite a bunch of, of red and white, what are they, piss balls, whatever they are, very, very light plastic. And then if you rotate it like this, I'll try and keep it turned over as I'm doing it. I'll see if, see if I can get it to focus as well. It's steady. So it makes a remarkable effect, which is very safe for children, of course, to play with. The amount of uh, electrostatic voltage there is very, very low indeed, so there's no sense of having electric shocks from this. And it's magical to see things perhaps defying gravity and able to hold themselves up in the air, held up by this mysterious thing called electrostatic force. Extraordinary. So this one is, this, this is a good demonstration. I've got a later one which came up much later, which I'm still trying to get for our shop. But that's a, that's a nice invention from the Israelis. I've got two of them, one to show later on. But it's a, it's, it's, a, it's a good start, I think, to the thing. Then we move on to a British attempt to make an electrostatic toy, which really doesn't work at all well, that's a pity. Um, I'll cover that bit in a minute, bring it out. It consisted of a rod like this, and you took this off, and inside you've got the actual object thing which is supposed to do the um, floating in the air. This is just a very light bit of foam, fo fo foam. And then the idea is to put this on like that. And I'll take this bit out because that works a little bit better, that, that stuff there. And you rub it like mad like that and you've got to really have very, very dry air to make it work. And then you're supposed to hold it over the thing and it sort of, well, as you see, it's not doing it, but it should hover up there. Was it ever did? I can't remember. I've got a feeling it did for a short time. It hovered in the air like that, which is very nice to see with not my hand holding it. But it's, you can't get really enough electrostatic uh, energy in there to make it hover because it just isn't going to, it just falls into the thing. So that's something that's ne always frustrated me. It's never actually worked properly. With the more recent stuff, this stuff here, which is much lighter, I could, with a bit of effort, I think late last night I was I was on, on and on and on trying to make it float. It just about sort of wanted to float. Yes, yeah, so it's just starting to float because this is much lighter stuff and it keeps dropping back in again. There's not enough um, static electricity in this, in this um, technology. It doesn't seem to work so well. So that was um, two out of 10. This is a more recent one, a much more recent one from Fred de Mert's um, invention and it's like the first one it's lots of little piss balls white ones these are let me get it up the camera out of focus and we bring it back a bit there and then as we pull this thing across if it's going to do its stuff we start to start to make them move they raise the head they've been pushed away by static electricity and sometimes they're drawn in so the idea with this one is to rub it like that to get it charged up so it's got some electrostatics to play with. Then bring it up the camera, and you'll see them starting to run over each other. There we are. And now as I bring this up, you see them all running over each other. Like soil. Some of them clinging to the top surface up there, notice. So if you look very carefully at it, you're getting some quite nice effects there, and there's as far as it goes. And then you go back to the other side. So that actually did create some quite pleasing effects, and a lot better than I think the British one, which never seemed to work, but it was a, 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 a daring thing to do. There's another American toy, which again, doesn't work that well. In fact, it only works in the dark. It's called Spook Light. It's made by um, 
Evanston Scientific. This is 1984, so it's about well, 30 years ago. I'll just show what the blurb says first up the camera. Put it back there. That's going to keep rolling off, I think. Well, this is the card it came with. So that was on the front. And then on the back were some quite nice notes starting off with a reference to Benjamin Franklin with his famous flying a kite in the sky and flying electricity, etc., etc., etc. So it was quite a nice idea. But this one, what you're supposed to do with this um, is rub it hard on the head, which I haven't got any hair left, or rub it there, but again, very dry. And in the dark, there's a tiny neon there which lights up. I've had a go with our rehearsal to see if I can make it work using a, a Van de Graaff generator, which is. Well, one of these I'll show at the end is actually a fun fly stick, but this creates 20,000 volts at this end. So I might be able to get this to actually perform for you. Let's have a go. I need to put it that way like that. And you should see a little tiny discharge in this neon when it reaches about 20,000 volts. There we are, it's working now. Oh, there we are, flashing away. You, you see the occasional flash appear, look. So there's a flashing effect, which is should be done, not with that generator, but just a bit of this or a bit of that, and hold in the dark and then touch it, and it works. So it sort of works, but it's a little bit a little bit iffy, I think. So some of these ones really are um, difficult to show. They're, they're far better, really, to see them in um, science museums, but I think they're probably the best things I've ever seen is the, is the effect of literature. But uh, there's a few more to show at a, at a later time, but it's a, it's a rarity, and it's a pity, because it's one of the fundamental forces of nature, along with magnetism and gravity and so on. And it's something that um, children certainly will enjoy. This, this is a very good start to, to show the effect. But the other three, I have to say, are a little bit, um, well, hard to, hard to see effect in the right place. Still, more to come. <laughs>